Hey guys, it's Peter and Mary, and welcome back to the Living with Hope podcast, a weekly conversation where we dig into God's Word and explore what it means to live with hope in Jesus. We were talking about one single verse, and it's a verse that I had screenshot or like a photo of on my phone. So sometimes when I find verses or passages that really hit me, I take either a screenshot if it's on my Bible app or a picture on my phone of my Bible because I like to text it to friends or just have it on there so when I'm looking through my pictures, I find it. So I found this passage and there's red writing on like underlining. And so I'm looking through my Bible trying to find this verse. Is it 1 Thessalonians or 2 Thessalonians? And I was like, I'm so confused. Did I have it in a different Bible? There's no red, like, underlining. It's a photo of my Bible, which I then underlined on the photo. It's not in my Bible. I should underline it, though, because this verse, you know, was speaking to the the people in the Thessalonian church, I'm Mm -hmm. assuming. But it also speaks some huge truth to us today. It is 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 24 we're going to zoom in on. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Mm. Wow. I I think that there's so much there as this is coming at the end of this letter to the church in um, Thessalonica. And it's an encouragement. It's this closing benediction, which when you hear that word, that means like praise or um, a good word is literally what a benediction is. And so this is the good word that Paul ends this letter with. He who calls you... So, so calling, that is a, um, a beckoning. It's a, uh, invitation, invitation and an entrusting, like God calls us to a purpose and he calls us to a person himself. He calls us to, um, as it says in Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, that he prepared before the foundations, uh, foundation of the world, good works that we should walk in them. So he calls us to these things. And then he turns from what has been put on us and he turns our eyes to himself. He who calls you is faithful. And, and so I want to think about, and Mary, you can, maybe you can chime in on this, So often, I think when we think about calling in life, we think about our faithfulness. Right. But this verse calls us to turn our eyes to God's faithfulness. Yeah, and we think of our actions, our education, our actions. Did I just say that? (laughs) Um, But basically, yeah, like we think of a calling, like what's my calling I'm going, I'm going to do X, Y, Z and accomplish X, Y, Z. And I just love how at the end of the day, it it says he will surely do it. So Mm. it's like, he's calling you, but God's going to be the one accomplishing what he has purposed and he's going to use you sometimes. Mm. And that's an honor. It takes my mind to our grass. Okay, tell us about our grass. You were called (laughs) to a purpose (laughs) of working this dirt, which was quite a feat. If you don't know, just a couple of days ago, I planted grass in our backyard. But it didn't start a couple days ago. It started months ago. Beginning of spring, I worked to overhaul the yard with dirt get rid of all the wood and debris and trash that we found in the yard. A bag of pantyhose buried in the (laughs) ground. That was creepy. We cleared all that out. Okay, so I did all this work to get ready for planting grass. So what's the analogy here? So you 
we're called to that. You put in all the work. You put the seed down. You cover it so it's protected from the birds. You water it. And that's the end of your job. Mm. And the one thing that we are really hoping for is that it grows. And we know that we have no control over that. We, mm. we bought the seeds. We prepared the ground. I'm saying we. It's all <laughs> him. Um, and every analogy falls somewhere, right? Yeah. So this is not a perfect analogy, but it did come to mind. Like, you did all this work, but ultimately we're just like, it's out of our hands if it grows. Yeah, I, I think... I think you're right. It's a good analogy, but it does fall short in this. I I think a helpful passage for, you know, one of the things we want to do when we read God's word is to read it in light of the whole. One way of doing that is we don't want to take this verse out of its context of what this is talking about. And, And so I'm going to back up to verse 16. He says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. And then listen to this. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I once preached a sermon where I said this is the um, RPG of the Christian life. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And give thanks in all circumstances. And this is God's will. This is the... um, as we think about calling, so many of us like struggle with that in our lives. Like, yeah. what is my purpose in life? What? And um, we can think of that on a, a real micro level, and we can think of it in a macro level, and all in between. There's all kinds of ways to think about it, but one way to think about it is, in all circumstances, this is part of your calling. Rejoice. Find joy in Jesus. Um, Give thanks in all circumstances yep. and pray without ceasing. Have this dependence upon God. Yep. That is part of your calling. And so fast forward down to this verse that we looked at. He who calls you to these things, he is faithful. Because as we seek to find joy in the Lord, dependence upon the Spirit and thanks in all circumstances, we're going to fall short in those things. We're going to have days where we aren't joyful, where we um, aren't depending upon the Lord. We're relying on our own strength and we're not grateful, but we're rather we're grumbling. And in that, like we recognize our dependence upon God and our need for the one who is faithful. Yeah. And this is the message of the gospel. Uh, I think this is where that analogy of grass falls short. Because in the analogy of the grass, I did my work and then God does his work. Right. But in the real scheme of life, it is God who works in both my doing, my calling, my rejoicing, my dependence, my prayer, my giving thanks. God is at work in that. I think Philippians yeah. chapter 2 verse, I think it's verse, uh, is it 12 or 13? Um, Mary's going to look that up. It talks about um, how we... Okay, uh, for it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. But right before that, he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you. And so it's not that we do this much work and then God fills up the rest. Right. It's we have a calling. Participation. Be- yes. That is the perfect word <laughs> here because we are invited. Your calling in life, the will of God for you, is to participate in what God is doing. It's not that we... Um, I think one of the misnomers that's tossed around that is not in the Bible, is not biblical, is God helps those who help themselves. The idea of we put in effort and then God will help us, that's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is that we are powerless and God comes, he resurrects our dead hearts, our hearts that are... um, 
hardwired towards sin, mm-hmm. toward making uh, ourselves as the king on the throne of our lives. And God, by his grace, makes us alive together with Christ. And so this is the message of the gospel. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Wait, I thought I was called to do things. Yes, he is faithful. He will surely do it. And another, you know, thing we hear going back to that point you were just making is that we need to somehow like fix up our life. And then once I fix a few things, then I can come to God. Mm -hmm. Um, And my mind instantly goes to while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that idea of like truly come as you are. Mm -hmm. What was your big idea? Um, Do you know what I'm thinking of? The Ephesians chapter 2, that God doesn't make good people better. Is that one? Finish that one. He makes dead people live. Um, Your sin is too big for you to handle, but God's love is bigger than you realize or something. Oh, this is a quote from Tim Keller, which I think is really helpful, is that um, we are more sinful than we can ever realize, and we are more loved than we could ever imagine. And that's, I mean, that's goes right into the heart of the gospel is that we'll never realize the magnitude of our debt. And, um, I think one day on, on the other side of eternity, we will, um, see more fully the immense love and grace poured out on us at the cross of Jesus. Um, and so I, and just, just like rooting this all in this context, verse 21 says, but, um, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Like this is a calling that's hard. This is the hard stuff of the Christian life. It's in this, just like Mary said, the, the calling of the gospel is come as you are. And the, um, the invitation of the gospel is come as you are. The calling of the, the gospel is leave changed yeah. because God's grace and his faithfulness and his goodness um, wants to work. And like we talked about last week on the podcast, the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is in you. And so we are not debtors to sin no longer, but we are sons of God. So we live differently. We persevere in suffering. We um, fight sin. And so um, verse 23. But not by our own power. Yes. Verse 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then the verse we started with, he who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. And the calling here, we are called to sanctification in the Christian journey. Which is? to continually grow up into the righteousness that we have received by grace in Christ Jesus. And so we've been given a whole new wardrobe. As we put our faith in Jesus, we have a new identity. And so we spend our lives, the calling of the Christian life is to fit into the clothes that we've received, to... um, walk in the righteousness and the holiness um, that when God looked upon us in Christ Jesus and declared us righteous, we grow up into that. And so that's what Paul means when he says in Philippians chapter 2, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He's, He's not saying that we earn our salvation by working, by doing good works. But he's saying, we've received a salvation that we need to wear and tear and work out in and grow up into. And this is the calling. And I think all of that's kind of a context for um, this verse here, verse 24. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. 
at the end of the day, end of this letter, Paul points us, and the Spirit of God, I think, today wants to point you to the reality, not of your faithfulness or unfaithfulness, but to the reality of God's faithfulness. Yeah. And I just keep, my mind goes back to your RPG. Yeah. Um, Rejoicing, praying, and giving thanks. And, you know, when we... When we come to a hard day, but but in a good day as well, whatever the day looks like, or a section of the day that's hard or good, um, you know, staying grounded in the faithfulness of God and helping our humanity, like our minds that tend to look at the negative or our hearts that are struggling for hope, grounding ourselves in rejoicing in who he is praying and depending upon him yeah. and his faithfulness and giving thanks. Um, and I think that that practice of giving thanks, it really can help train our human brains as we practice giving thanks. And I think particularly when it's hard. Mm-hmm finding things we're thankful for when it's hard because when you start looking you'll be amazed at how many things you can come up with that you are grateful for Mm. and we're grateful for you guys whatever today looks like we pray that this can be really grounding for you in who christ is so we're gonna end this podcast just how we began with this verse he who calls you is faithful He will surely do it.